Hello folks, Tim Tunnicliffe now finished the Great Rugger Run and uh, I'm here at Old Coffee Inns Rugby Club where I spent 13 years of my rugby life. Minis and Juniors warming up here behind. They're going playing a curtain raiser today before Old Coffee Inns first 15 game. So yeah, a lot of great memories on this pitch, too many to really remember. Um, let's wander off and speak to some people straight away, shall we? It's great to see the club so busy on a Saturday. Loads of people about. And um, there's a person here. All right, mate. How you doing? All right, Tony. How's it going? Good. What are you doing here today? Going for a little jog this morning. Yeah. yeah with you. <laughs> as you already knew. Yeah, I do. Uh, yeah, nice. I, I was there. Um, so what you're going to tell us about Old Coffee Inn's greatest day. greatest day. Greatest day. I actually don't know the date. I should have worked about all the year. 20, 2004, 5, 2005, summer of 2005, last game of the season at home versus Blackheath. Uh, the context of it was we had lost to Blackheath in the final of the Ken Cup the week before by 60 plus points. So we weren't feeling overly confident. Uh, conversely, they were. And uh, we needed to win to stay up. It was our second year in the National League. Uh, and there was a whole host of teams who were, could have got stayed up and could have gone down. And uh, Blackheath were in the top quarter of the league. and. We weren't so uh, but yeah it was a classic coal fearing day sunny day uh the opening of the new stand uh which was a lot newer back then uh but yeah it was the first day of the uh the new stand being open glorious sunny day blackheath brought there hundreds of traveling support and uh yeah we changed i think two players in the team like, i think andy williams and, and taff oh he'll love that uh <laughs> were the only change of the week before and uh yeah, it was, uh, it was a wonderful day. And um, oh, I can't really remember huge moments, despite having this one of the only few games that we ever played in that was videoed. Uh, we played down, this, down, the, down the, the slope into our famous corner. I think we scored three tries in the first half. Taff, Taff again, God, he's going to love this. Uh, famously uh, outpacing their winger to score in the corner. I obviously slotted the conversion from that round touchline. Of course you did. Which we stopped there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Big Gav uh, was uh, dangerous from fullback. Lockie, Lockie, Lockie and scored. Lockie and Tass in the centres. Yeah. It was a humdinger of a match. Uh, although having watched the back, the quality is really poor. <laughs> but at the time, it just felt amazing. And uh, so, yeah, we were up by a couple of scores at half time. They came back. Um, and then I remember sitting uh, for a good 15 minutes on the line down here in the second half. We didn't score any points at all. Uh, I think we, we, we passed up a few kicks at goal. Uh, and then we, I think I kicked one penalty in that second half. Anyway, uh, it ended up, I think we were 28 27 up. Uh, the last 10 minutes or so were just so tense. I think I even joined a ruck at one point. I mean, that's how desperate it got. Uh, and uh, yeah, final whistle. Remember the final whistle? All the lads, I think yourself including Me, I was yeah, injured. He was yeah. injured. Uh, spectators and everybody invaded the pitch. I mean, it felt like I was probably about 10 people. But uh, <laughs> yeah, 28, 27, the fam famous, famous day. I remember having the photo under the scoreboard. And um, I think with that win, we, uh, we ended up finishing mid-table. I think the highest league position Colts ever achieved. I think like eighth or ninth or something in uh, Division 1. There were calls of, um, there was a calls of a steward's inquiry, I think, from one of those. It haven't, I think, who got relegated because of it. We were really uncertain as to how we could have lost 60 points uh, <laughs> uh, the week before and then won by one point. But that was classic Colts. We did the same with London and London Scottish, didn't we? Uh, the season afterwards, or two seasons afterwards. Uh, lose by, by 70 away and win by one point at home. It was, uh, it was always away. So, yeah, uh, I think that quite, I'm quite possibly the highest point in my Colfian career, really. Yeah. I think the following season, I think I got injured and didn't play as much. We got relegated. And, yeah, from there, it was, I guess it was. You know, a lot and the club as a whole went downhill, really, I think, as a, after that. Well, I wouldn't say... <laughs> So saying it's all your fault, is it? Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I mean, look, you, you know, again, maybe maybe in terms of if, if league positions all you care about, yeah. But um, <laughs> actually, you know, we had none of this when we were here. We didn't have hundreds of millions of juniors coming down on Saturday. I think the, the, the club's doing pretty well, actually. Yeah. It's nice to be down here. The pitch is looking amazing. It's a nice day. There's plenty of people coming for lunch beforehand. What's not to like? Absolutely. Right. Thank you, Tana. No worries. Going to go and find some old people to talk to now. Uh, yeah, obviously a very flipping joke by myself there. The club is in great shape, um, as evidenced by the number of people out and about today enjoying themselves. Let's go and find some more people to talk to if we can. Wandering across here. We might go into the clubhouse, see if we can find somebody in there. So this is one of the famous parts of the club here. The big old oak tree. <laughs> the big old oak tree by the scoreboard corner. Hi Al, how you doing? Thanks mate. Um, we're going to go in and find a few more characters inside now if we can. 
to talk about some different parts of the club. This is a lovely outdoor seated area that we here, have here, Ron's garden. And we're going to go and head in and see if we can find Stephen Hughes. Here we go, here we go, into, into the bar, into the noisy bar. See if we can find anybody in here to talk to. Going to just come back out to this quiet a little bit over here now. Slightly more quiet anyway. It's going to get noisy again now because here's Stephen Hughes. Hello Tim. How are you doing mate? Good mate, you? Excellent, very. Uh, what are you drinking there today? Uh, just a Moretti top mate, start myself off. Early doors, yeah, early doors. Yeah, nice, nice, steady start. Now, uh, I was just telling the people that, you know, the social scene here at Old Coffee Inns is and has been over the years just one of the things that people really love about the club yep. and you have a pivotal role in that or you still have a pivotal well, role in that. Every yeah. now and again, every so now and like again. To, like, talk about your roles and responsibilities? Uh, my roles, well, I, I don't make uh, the rules, I just uh, enforce them. That is how it goes. Uh, there are unwritten rules that everybody knows or doesn't know. If they don't know, they need to find them out, really. And uh, I therefore have, um, today, a nice plastic cup in which I collect all the fines that are going around. As you will know, and undoubtedly you'll be fine later. Yeah, I've got a blue shirt. Uh, oh, well, that's straight tenor. <laughs> And um, what p kind of personal satisfaction do you take out uh, of this? Thing? Absolutely none. No? Ab well, a little bit, all right, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I I'm in the know, so therefore I don't always get fined as much as everybody else. So that's how it goes. Yeah, you just stay on top of the rules. Yeah, exactly. Squeaky clean, basically. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say that. My <laughs> wife wouldn't say that. Well, she probably does. <laughs> Oh, good stuff. Is there anything else you want to tell us about the uh, the club here? No, I think uh, the club here, as as I mean, it's great. It's a social scene is fantastic. Everybody, no matter who you are, what I love about this club, you can be new to the club, come in, and you're welcomed by everybody. It's fantastic. Yeah, completely agree. Thank you, mate. Uh, let's get Lukey Walden. Can you send Lukey over for me, please? Yeah. <laughs> Luke, seem, Luke, Luke seems keen to come and talk to me. Hello, Brian. How are you doing? I'm fine. We might just we might just pause here for a second, Luke. Hello. Uh, uh, wait, hey, wait, look, Hi, Josh. look. look there's my name. Sounds like me. yours. Still can't club quite believe it. Club captains. Let's walk. Yeah. Let's walk this way. Yeah, yeah. This is uh, Luke Walden, everybody. Luke, Luke, he's played down here, down here for years. What are you drinking? Uh, just a pint of regular Guinness. Lovely, lovely. Look at that. Beautiful. Now we have come through here. This is the Ernie Reed Lounge. Let's come over this way a little bit, mate, so we've got better light. Um, now, uh, music has been a big part of this club all Absolutely. the time that I've been involved in it. So I'd just like you to sort of talk about some of the things that we do here on the musical front. Well, we were very lucky, as you know. We had a, we had a fantastically uh, talented group of players who were good at rugby, <laughs> which is good, but also very talented from a musical perspective as well. So we used to have some fantastic nights down here of... Um, uh, music. Well, we used to set up music nights where we had Al Kennedy, who used to just uh, entertain the crowd. Then it just built up, built up, and before you knew it, the whole place was jam packed. We used to have uh, the bands playing, and it was great. It was a great way of bringing everyone into the community of the rugby club um, who might not have got involved previously. Yeah, there were times where we had like six, seven, eight different bands on a single night. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and it was good, well, you know, we, we sort of had friends of friends coming in and getting used to the club, and it was uh, just a lovely, lovely environment to be part of. Yeah, it was like, what, I don't know, maybe 10 years of, of really, really good ones, wasn't it? I'd, I'd yeah, say. yeah, there were, there were a few absolute cool, because I remember, I mean, I was, you know, I was part of one of those bands, and there were a couple of times where you're singing and the hairs in the back of your neck are going up, it was... Uh, an incredible experience. Luke's been a little bit modest. Luke was, uh, was the lead singer of, of the band that kind of headlined it most times. Wow. Well, yeah, mm. I suppose. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, just, um, I mean, it started in here, though, didn't it? Do you remember the very first I do. one? I it was do. very ad hoc, and it just this tiny little room. Yeah. Um, I think it was, like, one guitar, and people yeah. just... Well, we had about 200 people in here. Yeah. <laughs> and I think Dave Rogers, uh, his... his his efforts was just reading a book. And we had, I remember there was Pete Atkinson uh, walking around with a tray, whacking people on the head, uh, for, along to the boxer. <laughs> and that's where it all started. And it started at very humble beginnings, but we ended up, like you say, uh, with bands. Um, 
and it all got quite professional. It did, although it? it wasn't professional no. at all. Yeah. Very far from it. Just lots then. of fun, really. Yeah, loads of fun. Good, good days. Perfect, mate. Great stuff. Could you do me a favour? Could you go and find Blythe in there? I'm going to go and find Blythe and send him through to you. Yeah, for me. Cheers. Well, Team, well done. Thanks, buddy. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah. So this is, uh, yeah, this is a place like I said where I spent 13 years of my rugby life, and I just, I love it here. Um, I'm looking forward to having a great lunch with the lads prior to this first team game that's going to be going on in a minute. Um, and of course, Curtin Razor with the minis and juniors. It's actually a really fabulous scene here today. The seconds are playing at home as well, uh, I think. So um, that's going to be great. Hopefully we're going to find the chairman. Here he comes. Look at this. Look at this fine pair of trousers walking down the corridor here. What, a lemon, a lemon chino? <laughs> <laughs> here he is. Hello, mate. How are you? I'm good, mate. How are you? Yeah, Just really give well. us your full name, please, and tell us what you do here at Old Coffee Inns. Uh, Bill Blythe, and I am the chairman of Old Coffee Inns. Nice. New chairman as well, isn't it? Yeah, this is my first year. I was uh, elected in June of this year, so uh, still all a bit new, still learning the ropes. Uh, luckily, Dave Hodgkiss, the, the guy that's uh, who was chairman, he's, he's president, and he's all showing me that, you know, Tell, telling me where I'm going wrong. So. <laughs> so. No, that, no, but I've just been saying to the people, what a wonderful scene we've got here today. So many people here at the club. Oh, if you'd just like to talk a little bit about that, it looks fantastic. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, and, that's, and that's why we do it, right? So we're, we're an amateur rugby club. It's, we're, we're, it's all volunteers who, who run this club. And today, you know, we've got a prelim, we've got under-12s playing before the, 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 uh, the, the first team game. We've got the one, they've got the twos playing here as well. Double header against Beckenham, which is fantastic, and then it's a very similar scene on on um, on Sundays as well. When we've got the mini section, we've got the junior section, we've got three girl sides, we've got a thriving cult section as well. So it's just like, without sounding too cheesy, Tim, it's just really positive down here. Everything about it, it's just it's about rugby community getting together. It's a fantastic, fantastic place, mate. Yeah, good stuff, excellent stuff. Now, one other thing I'd like you to mention as well is. Um, uh, Ron, Ron Seymour, you talk about a little bit about Ron and what's happening today for him. Yeah, certainly. I mean, Ron Seymour, absolute club legend. The, the guy was here for like 50, 60 years. He put his life and passion into, uh, into just doing everything. Like the, the guy that, and uh, every rugby club's got one, the guy that just fixes everything, the guy that does, just spends his entire life just making sure the club functions. And he sadly passed this year and we're having a memorial uh, he's very famous. He's got a rose garden out there. That he I used. pointed out on the way through. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, any 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 sort of dogs pissing on there, or anyone, <laughs> any football stray balls. You know, you go absolutely mental about it. So we're going to sprinkle some of his ashes and have a little memorial memorial service and just uh, remember what a great guy he was. You know. So. Yeah, hundred percent. And um, of course, something that's been in place for a little while is his chair by the bar as well. Yeah, that that that'll always be here. And as you know, like we went on tours together with him, and the, the guy was just an absolute legend. Grumpy sod. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the times, but but, uh, but we loved him for it. A hundred percent, yeah. He was always at the bar, smoking his roll ups. Just a top guy. <laughs> yeah. Just a top guy. Hundred percent. Okay, mate. Is there anything else you want to say about coffee ends or anything else? No, just mate. Just I just want to say congrats on the run today. Like massive achievement, and and I think your causes that particularly like the mental health, clearly topical. I was talking about it last night. Actually, it's just great that. We're moving away from this kind of sort of, you know, it's not such a taboo now and people can talk about it. And that's what, that's, you know, that's half the thing. And I just, mate, massive, like, thanks for raising awareness and, you know, good luck to you, mate. Good, mate. Thank All you, right. Bill. Thank Cheers, you, mate. Take care. Enjoy the rest of the day. I'm going to be coming and joining you. Today. No, no, that's it, bud. Oh, Thank you. Um, okay, that's it here from Old Coffee Inns. We're going to call it there. Uh, it's a busy place here today and I'm looking forward to it getting involved in the pre-match lunch and then getting out and watching the first team hopefully get a win or at least a great performance uh, today. So thank you again for watching. This is likely to be the last Facebook Live that we're going to do for the Great Rugger Run this year. So uh, as Bill mentioned there, it's all for mental health uh, charities that are involved within rugby. So whatever you can do to help share, spread the word and donate if you can, be gratefully received. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, maybe I'll see you in 2022.